Therefore, he can believe in hydrogen, but in populations of individual hydrogen atoms, each one with slight vibrations that we perhaps have not been able to, to record yet, but not the general category hydrogen. And the same thing would apply to every social category. The list would deny, should deny, because he sometimes fails to live up to his own principles, that there's such a thing as the state in general, or the market in general. You say there are individual governments, the individual government of the United States, with a particular history, institutional history, with a partic particular legitimacy problems which have been overcome over history. For instance, the Constitution doesn't mention bureaucracies, so how do you justify bureaucracies? That has been an issue in the United States in the 20th century. Bureaucracies preceded democracy in France and England, so that same issue does not arise there. They are, they are also individual, singular systems of organizations. My students, of course, already heard this whole speech about markets, how there is no such thing as the market in general. There are simply individual bazaars, this marketplace in this town, this bazaar in this other town, then when many of those individual marketplaces get linked together, this happens by the 13th century or the 14th century, they hold all of the markets in a region come together and they form a regional market or a regional trading area, but that's also singular. The re this particular region in Austria, this particular region in France, this particular region in Belgium. When several of those regional markets come together and form a provincial market by the 16th century, there are also individual singularities. This province, this other province, with its personality, with its unique flavor, with its unique uh, 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 aromas, with its unique merchant cries. Finally, in England in the 18th century and later on in the 19th century in France, Germany and the United States, national markets are born by stitching together previously existing uh, uh, provincial markets and we have the national market. But that's also the national market of the United States, the national market of England, the national market of France, not the market in general. So the, the one part, an important part of the Lucis world is a world populated by individual singularities operating at different spatial-temporal scales. The species is an individual singularity, but it not only is larger than individuals, since it contains many individuals, it also lasts longer than individuals. You and I, we're going to last, if we're lucky, a hundred years. The human species has been around for thousands of years. So species are individuals, but live, are born and die at temporal scales, at temporal scales, scales much larger than ours. And the same thing for spatial scales. So it's this diversity of scales, but the exact same ontological status for everything that constitutes what the list calls the actual, the actual world, the world of actual things. So what are universal singularities? Well, here we need to go to math, because the list, of course, doesn't trust neither logic nor language to do the job. Logic of language are going to land us right here. So if individual singularities replace human as a species in Aristotle's schema, what replaces animal? Remember that he begins with animal, divides it up until he gets to human, and then divides it up until he gets to, to particular individual humans. Well, what replaces animal is, a, and I'm going to use the word and I'm going to explain it later, a topological diagram which is a kind of abstract, virtual animal. Let's, in fact, go one level below animal. Animal belongs to the level of kingdom, you know, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom. The next subdivision in the evolutionary tree is called phylum. We, as vertebrates, belong to the phylum chordata. Forget about the name. The important thing is a phylum is simply a body plan is the basic body plan for all vertebrates. It's a body plan so flexible that if you twist it and, and, and fold it and stretch it one way, you get a giraffe. If you twist it and, 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 and fold it in other ways, you get a rhinoceros. 
If you twist the arms so as to make them kind of wings, you get a bat. If you, if you keep on twisting it and even get rid of the limbs, you get a snake. It's a, it's a body map that can be transformed into any one vertebrate. Clearly, this body map cannot be specified using metric notions, such as length, or body, body surface area, or the volume of my cranium. Because volume, length, and area vary from one animal to another. There are, for instance, if we specify the neck via a particular length, well, what would happen with the giraffe that has a very long neck? Or what would happen to the rhinoceros, or, or certain people I know that have no neck? <laughs> a topological surface, a topological entity, is an entity that can be folded and distorted into another entity without losing its identity. For instance, let's take a typical example of a donut. And a mug such as you would use to serve yourself coffee. Now from a Euclidean point of view, those are two entirely different things. The only time you see them together is when a policeman goes into a coffee shop and has a cup of coffee, a cup of coffee and drinks them both. But if you put on topological glasses, so to speak, you would not be able to tell the difference between those two. They are the exact same shape. How can, how can we tell that? Well, let me do a little animation. I'm going to start folding one into the other. Frame number one of the animation. I'm going to remember we can do all kinds of operations in topology, stretching, folding, pushing in. The only things that are forbidden are cutting and gluing. I'm going to explain why in a second. So we can do anything, rotating it, translating it. But I'm just going to do everything with just folding, you'll see, and stretching. I'm just going to first stretch this part, this way, and so as to leave the hole to one side. So after I apply this operation, I still have my little donut here, only now the hole is on one side. That's basically the same donut, only I stretch this part really hard. In frame number two, I'm going to make with a, piece of, with a piece of chalk or something a little circular mark here. I'm just drawing. I'm not cutting anything. And I'm going to start, imagine that this is made out of clay. And I'm going to start pushing with my fingers down so as to create a pocket. I'm still just folding. I'm not cutting or, or intersecting anything. I'm just folding this into itself. So when I finish doing that, what I've got is my funky donut here, and here now I have a little pocket. The pocket doesn't go all the way through because that would be cutting, and in any case if you went all the way through it would not serve you to put coffee on, but now we start getting this part of the coffee mug. Pinching is also allowed. <laughs> I mean, not me. <laughs> And so I'm going to now start pinching and stretch and, and, and pushing this over so as to straighten it up a little bit. I'm pinching over here a little bit. Well, it's not exactly a coffee mug, it's more like a mutant coffee mug <laughs> or a, a coffee mug that was just mugged. It looks sad, nevertheless, it's a hell of a lot closer to that than it is this. In other words, in topology, as long as you can transform one form into another by stretching and folding, it is the same form. The only thing that's forbidden is cutting and gluing. Why? Because in topology, the most important thing that must be preserved is connectivity. 